All right, today we're going to go over something. Bow bar saws. What are they? Their differences, their advantages, maybe disadvantage, and the dangers. So let's go ahead and let's get started. <laughs> seen one of these or even know what they're used for and they ask and a lot of great questions on that so let's go ahead and let's go over it they were developed in the south for cutting pulp wood so you know smaller wood you didn't want to have to get down you know every time on one knee to cut wood up and down up and down that's gonna put a pain on your back your knees you name it nobody wants to do that so you go ahead and when you use it you're cutting with the tip here and we'll be showing that here in a little bit on cutting and the use of it they can be used on direct drives and shown here a McCullough 640 gear drive it's an 80 cc saw this one has a two to one output on it running a half inch chain I did a video a while back of adapting this home light bar to it and I if I remember I'll put the link in the description on that but this saw runs this one very nicely um, I just absolutely, this was also the first saw I completely rebuilt. I mean, I got it and just complete tear down everything new and I couldn't be happier with it. Um, as far as, you know, what kind of chains you run, no special chain, but I would recommend going with a full comp that would be tooth link, tooth link, not skip because running skip on this is not going to make any difference. Matter of fact, you're going to be in some smaller woods. You don't want it to jump and everything on that. So it's just one of those, do that. And this is half inch chain right here. You can go four or four, three eighths, just depending on what your saws needs, you know, your sprocket and, you know, all the necessary stuff for it. Um, there always, when it comes to some safety things on these things too, you'll notice there's a little foot here. All right. You want to use that foot. It must be there. That keeps it from coming and kicking back up on you. And like I said, we'll show that in the video of cutting also when we're going. Um, and you'll notice that uh, some of them do have hand guards or those protective guards. Some don't. This one doesn't. Just be very careful. Um, I do plan on making one for this at some point. There's a bolt hole here and here for it. There's two spots. I plan on making one to have so at least have a little protection right here. Sometimes they are on the bottom, but just watch yourself. Run safety chaps and stuff like that. That's a recommendation. All your PPE, you know, some people do, some people don't. I'll leave that up to the person and what they decide to use. Now, why would you want to use a bow bar over a traditional bar? You know, like a traditional bar like this. Well, like I said, you know, less getting on the ground because this is the cutting surface on a regular bar. So you have to get down, cut, back up, over, and everything. With this, you are cutting with this front part, which also you'll note is part of a kickback zone right here, which is part another thing to use that foot when doing this. It keeps it from coming up. You got this whole area right here, and you're plunge cutting, pushing the saw down into the log. Generally, it's actually the weight, depending on how big it is, the saw is about 30 pounds. So you're letting the saw do the weight, and you're just kind of pivoting with that foot right here to do the cuts and you're just kind of hunched over a little bit depending on how tall you are I'm six one so I have to hunch a little bit but it beats getting up and down and if you're like in the five foot areas and everything this all is perfect you're just right there just push lift to the next cut and to the next it just works fantastic um, like I say some of the dangers are kickbacks and everything like if you're cutting one log and then there's another one in front that could cause a kickback you got to be careful and watch your surroundings when you're using one of these. Um, it's definitely a must on that. Um, like I said, you are cutting with the kickback zone, which is kind of designated. You know, you take a normal bar right here and they have their tiny little spot right here for kickback, the little spot right here. You know, pretty much just, you know, if you're plunge cutting, you know how to do that up and in stuff. Well, this one, this is a kickback. 
this one is amplified right here. This whole entire spot is that. So be warned. That's what the foot kind of saves you for. You start your cut right here and you work your way in. And you don't stand in line when you're cutting. You stand to the side also when you use these. Like I say, we'll, I'll try to get some shots of that and everything and whatnot. In, and these are something though, I mean, it looks weird and you are correct. And they come in a couple different styles. I don't have the other one. I gave those away, traded those off, good brush bars. I really didn't have a use for it at the time. But they're elongated and they're good for brush and everything. You know, smaller stuff and brush cutting. And I've seen them, they can also be used as regular saw bars. You know, so it's kind of a dual purpose. But for this one right here, you plunge cut, the cutting is all done on the nose right here. This is something that kind of you want to get used to doing and everything. You know, get comfortable with something with this and everything. Don't just jump right in. And as you use it more and everything, you get used to it, you'll find out that it really saves a lot of time with, you know, cutting wood and everything. Um, there's a reason why it's they're getting more popular, or gaining their popularity and everything as people learn about them. Just because of the ability to cut wood faster and easier. They quit making them back in the day because people were getting careless and a lot of people were getting severely injured in some cases killed because of improper use of these so just be warned of what you are dealing with I mean the chainsaw itself is a dangerous tool but it's only as dangerous as you allow it to be to you so you want to make sure your saw is in good working order and everything it isn't trying to run away scream nothing like that to where you know this could become that much more dangerous to you so I guess let's go ahead and let's go make a few cuts with this and let's see uh, we'll, I'll try to get some different shots of it for you of what's going on and everything and we'll do that all right let's go ahead and let's fire up this old girl uh, do a few examples of cutting here and when I say we're gonna, you know, use that foot right there, it stays against there when you start to cut. And some guys will put their foot right there on their work or whatever, and that's fine. But you'll notice how when I'm cutting, I'm not gonna try to stay in line with that. I'm gonna stay to the side and everything. So we'll go ahead, we'll fire up this old girl and uh, get going here. Hopefully that answered a few questions about these and uh, more than it brings up so it's one of those it's these are really really good saws the bars and combine it with the gear drive and you see how quick it went right through and that chain it needs a little touch-up job but overall um, I definitely it's it's really good for this kind of size of wood just you're not bending down you're letting that saw do the weight and the work and everything so 
Right, I just want to, you know, say thanks for watching. And if you like these kinds of videos and stuff, let me know. I'm always taking suggestions. And uh, until then, uh, like, comment, subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And uh, leave a comment. I, I really enjoy, I try to respond to all the comments and everything. So and any help and whatnot for part numbers and stuff that I can get you. So, all right. Like I say, until then, thanks for watching.